Some days I think I need more women friends, but I grew up the oldest of seven more sisters. There were eight of us girls, and I think the last thing I need is more drama. But today we have author Melanie Dale, author of Women Are Scary, here to tell us why we really do need more mom friendships. Her book is all about why mom relationships are important, and she's going to tell us why women really aren't so scary. It's what we're talking about right now. Welcome to Right Now. I'm Jennifer Shookman. I'm so excited today that we have author and blogger Melanie Dale here. Melanie, you have this book with this great title, Women Are Scary. <laughs> Yet yeah, you're a very accomplished woman. You've been blogging. You're the mom of three kids. You've written this book. You've got another book coming out soon. Do you really find women scary? They're terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by that? You know, I spent my whole life kind of um, intimidated by other women. Mm -hmm. And then when I became a mom, mm -hmm. the intimidation factor grew. Um, because I found myself worrying about, am I doing a good enough job as a mom? And I would look at other women and see that they seemed to have it all together. And I would freak out and think, I could never be as good as them. <laughs> They're probably going to judge me. And then it was all this comparison back and forth all going on in my head while I'm trying to be normal outside. <laughs> I think we all have some of that. I can certainly relate to that. But let me ask you, what's the scariest thing a woman has ever done to you? Okay, I have a literal scary thing that happened. I was having a play date with another mm -hmm. mom and our kids were playing and I am um, not really good with the outdoors. I uh, get really terrified about allergies and bugs and everything going on outside. And so I went out to her farm and halfway through the play date, I realized there was a tick crawling up my back and attaching on it. So oh. in the middle of this brand new meeting with another mom, I um, had to whip my shirt off and she had to get that tick off for me. So that was probably literally the scariest experience I've had with another mom. So did mom. you become good friends since you're taking your clothes no. off? No, no, it was too much. It was too much for the first date. No. <laughs> so when I think of women being scary, I, I remember there was a time where I was directing a musical at my son's school, and um, we had to keep the aisles clear. It was during a dress rehearsal. We had to keep the aisles clear for the preschoolers to walk in. It was dark, and so I would stand there with the flashlight and just escort them in. Well, some mom came in to pick up her, you know, middle school child or something, and she refused to move. And I was like, you need to move, you know, kind of thing. And I didn't really think about it, but, like, the door was opening. The kids were coming in. She was there, and I asked her to move. She didn't, and I just sort of like moved her and well I mean I didn't I just sort of touched her like to move you know I need you to move kind of thing so I can get the fly you know and I just and she started screaming and cussing and yelling at me in front of the preschoolers and the and I I you know I wasn't trying to be mean right? I was really just concentrating on the kids and I was just trying to like you know how you kind of like scoot somebody over so you can get by or do whatever mm -hmm. and I was like wow okay and I was terrified of that woman mm -hmm. from then on mm -hmm. like her kids were amazing but that woman like I was scared of forever yeah yeah that is awesome Awkward. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. So, uh, why do you think it's so important for women to get along then? I mean, if they are crazy mm -hmm. and there's a lot of drama with women, why do you think it's yeah. so important? I mean, it is tempting to just never leave the house I, and not interact. Yeah. It really is. It's, it's tempting. But I, I feel like the other mom friends that I've gotten to know um, have made me a better mom. Mm. Um, I've learned so much about my own parenting from them. I've learned that I'm actually not such a bad mom, and they've, <laughs> they've been an encouragement to me. I've learned a lot from them as well. Um, and frankly, it's fun. Sometimes you can feel like you drive your kids around all day in a minivan and, and pull into your garage and shut the door and never interact with your yeah. neighbors. And, and, and so being intentional with other women to actually get to know each other has, has been a huge part for my life. I know it's made my home a much more fun household for That's my kids. That's really great. I, I know you've got a little bit of a story about your kids and your family and, and how you went through to get that. And I want to talk more about that. But we're going to take a break right now. We're talking with Melanie Dale. And when we come back, we're going to find out just how important those women's relationships were for her during some difficult times that she endured. Stay tuned and we'll be right back. Welcome back. We're talking with Melanie Dale, author of Women Are Scary. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I can find women can be really scary. So Melanie, do you despite your fear and terror of women, um, have found them to be really important in your life. Mm -hmm. And it's because you've been through some things where women have come alongside you and been helpful. Tell us about that, like your family and the things you've been through. Sure, I have three kids and they are from three different continents. What? 
Three different continents? Three different continents. How, how, <laughs> did you just like go on a long vacation or what does that mean? <laughs> so um, I had a long five year journey with infertility, which was really difficult. And at the end of that, we had our son, mm -hmm. and um, he was born a preemie, mm. and I had just moved to a brand new area, and so I was a brand new mom in a brand new area with a little bit of a fragile mm. child, and um, so making friends was so important, and, and finding people to help walk me through that. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, I experienced more infertility after that, mm. and um, wasn't able to have any more kids, and God really just turned my heart to adoption. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I got so excited about that. So we adopted our youngest daughter from Ethiopia, mm -hmm. and then a couple years ago we adopted our oldest from Latvia. So uh, they came to us all out of order <laughs> and from all different regions of the world. Mm -hmm. And um, and so our family is eclectic, and I just absolutely love my kids. Um, but my girlfriends have been so important through all of that because the the uh, infertility process and then the, yeah. the waiting on those adoptions um, really took oh, a toll. Yeah, 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 it was a lot. And yeah. so I'm. Um, having girlfriends to come alongside of me and um, at one point we lost our, our last embryos and we weren't going to be oh. able to go forward anymore and so the girlfriends that came alongside and dropped meals off and mm. kind of held me through that was so important um, so yeah I absolutely love my girlfriends. So yeah so those are emotionally I mean I, I'm an adoptive mother too so I understand mm -hmm. um, just basically how that can be mm -hmm. um, but tell me a little bit about like what kinds of things they did and how they supported you through all that. Mm -hmm. um, my friends are amazing because <clears throat> they they really know when to um, when I need to talk and when they just need to be, need to listen. And so I have friends that will just go, let's go see a movie. Let's just get out of the house and go mm -hmm. get get a movie. And I don't want to talk. I don't want to deal with anything. I just want to be entertained. And so I've got friends for that, and they know when I need that. I have other friends that would just come and sit and mm -hmm. um, and not feel like they have to solve anything. Mm -hmm. um, and then and then I've got other other friends who would show up with a latte. <laughs> <laughs> hey, mama, have some caffeine. So um, my friends are super important mm -hmm. for all of that. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. So uh, tell me a little bit, about just like um, what happened as a result of this? You've, you've had these women who came alongside you through these difficult trying times that you did, mm -hmm. and you began to appreciate them, but you began to also think there are women who are scared of other women, mm -hmm. and so there's this whole jockeying thing you kind of do to make yeah. female friendships and other mom friendships. And so you started thinking about this, and then what did you do? So I noticed that my friendships that I had developed that were so important for me really uh, followed kind of a similar path. Okay. And I thought, hmm, I wonder if other people have experienced this. And, and I really see it as it going around the bases, <laughs> although not the dating bases that we know from high school or whatever. But you call but it mom dating. Mom dating. Yeah. It's, it is yeah. like dating. Yeah. And, and so we have our own set of bases. Mm -hmm. So uh, first base for me was getting to know another mom when our kids had a shared activity. So maybe it's dance class or soccer and you're just on the sideline and you start to kind of make that awkward small talk. <laughs> Nobody has chosen to be there, right? We're there for our kids, but, right. but you can either talk, talk to other people or you could just sit and stare at your stare phone, your phone right. which is valid. <laughs> and I do that sometimes too. <laughs> but then um, if you find someone that you like, then you get a little more intentional. And so second base would be a play date on a neutral location. Maybe you go, let's, hey, let's take the kids to the park and hang out, get to know each other a little more, the kids can play, and that was second base. Um, and then- So, okay, how much courage does it take to go from first base to second base? I think it depends on the mom, <laughs> and, and it depends. Um, I am kind of extroverted. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, I like to be by myself, but I can put myself out there a little bit. Um, and if I feel like she's kind of giving it back to me a little mm -hmm. bit, like she's interested, she's responding, then I might take it to the next step. But if she kind of is shutting me down and she's into her phone, I don't bug her. So it truly is almost like dating. You're like you're trying totally to see like if they're into you or not. Yes. Okay. yes. Right, so second date is like, hey, we should go to the park with the kids on Saturday. Right. And so, right. Okay. Yeah. Or even if you've just finished up dance class, mm -hmm. you, hey, do you want to go get food afterwards mm -hmm. and kind of mm -hmm. keep the conversation going? So whatever. Um, and then second base, once you've kind of developed a little trust there and mm -hmm. you like each other, then you move to third base and that's when you take her back to your place. Oh. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, third base, it's like about to get real <laughs> because she's going to see your dirty laundry, mm. your dirty dishes, if you're like me and you have a totally messy house yeah. all the time. And no so one's like you. We all no, have perfect houses. Everyone's perfect with me. That's so true. <laughs> you're feeding into my scary thing right now. <laughs> um, so 
So third base, you take her back to your place or you go to her house. Um, your kids are going to have to learn how to share their toys, which is a whole other thing if your kids are like mine. Um, and, and so at that point, there's a little more vulnerability. Mm -hmm. uh, you've really established, like, I, I enjoy hanging out with you. Mm -hmm. And then... Okay, but let me, let's stop there, though, a second. So third okay. base, okay. let's be real. Right. So if you're coming to my house for the first time, mm -hmm. I'm thinking, I wonder what her house looks like. And I wonder if mine's as good or as nice, or I wonder if it's as mm -hmm. clean or if it's as new, or if it's the, you know, if you just told me about the new carpet you got and I'm thinking, oh, mine needs to be like, because there's lumps and whatever, yeah. you know, like what's the kind of thought process that goes through a woman's head? Like I'm less, I'm like, let's go meet at McDonald's with the kids or Chick-fil-A, yeah. like rather than invite yeah. them to my house. So tell me about the kind of fears that women have at that point. And I think people can stay on second base as long as they need to. And then mm -hmm. some people skip second base and they're just immediately yeah. like, come to my yeah. house. It just depends yeah. on who you are yeah. and what you're like. And um, I think for me, I'm a very messy person. Mm -hmm. So when I think about having someone to my house, I try to think, I don't know if she's super messy or really clean. Let me just have enough surfaces clean that she can relax. Um, I'm not gonna pick up everything. There's still right. probably gonna be a piece of breakfast on the floor under the table, <laughs> but I'm gonna at least try to make it where there are some surfaces and maybe one room where we can sit down where she's well, not. And the truth of that is, is when I've gone to people's house and there are breakfast crumbs on their table and they acknowledge it when they walk in, like, ah, yeah. breakfast crumbs, yeah. I'll get those. You know, It actually makes me feel more relaxed than yeah. if the house is perfect and yes. neat. Like, I feel yes. better being there. And I, if you're like me, I can tend to want to apologize for my house a lot. Like, oh, I'm yeah, sorry, yeah, everything's yeah, bad, you know? Yeah. And I'm trying to really stop doing that and just going, welcome to my home. Yeah. I'm just happy you're right. here and not worry as much about the setting. Yeah, I've like cleaned it, like cleaned off the surfaces and put them in the doors and so they're like, oh, I'd love some tea. And I'm like, don't see me when I open this <laughs> closet or the pantry or whatever. <laughs> but one of the things that happens, I think, when you were in somebody else's house or they're in yours, you also sort of get a good look at their parenting in a way that you haven't had to before. Yes. So what can happen there? What can go wrong mm -hmm. with that? Um, if your kids are anything like mine, they're gonna totally act up, <laughs> definitely. Um, and, and so, yes, you have to navigate that. And um, I always tell people just don't freak out mm -hmm. everyone's kids have have rough days everyone is struggling with things so you know if her kid hits yours or your kid hits hers or there's a sharing mm -hmm. issue like everyone take a breath mm -hmm. no one is trying to kill anyone <laughs> it's gonna be okay um, we're just gonna take a breath and sometimes I've had to have my my child come and sit by me for mm -hmm. a little bit mm -hmm. you know to get under control and then they can go and have a second chance and yeah. occasionally it's just a it's just a rough day kids yeah. have rough days and you they just do. go you know what let's try again next week yeah, yeah. It doesn't so mean it the relationship's over. Okay, so you shouldn't do that. All no. right, but what if the problem's not with the kids? Mm -hmm. What if the problem's with the mom? Like, okay. I remember, like, mm -hmm. I, I had some great women friends who we had nothing in common except our kids were the same age. Right. We had joined a mommy group through church, and it was amazing, just like you say, because it was all those things like, my kid's doing this. Oh, yours is too. Oh, that's so reassuring. Mm -hmm. But some of the moms just didn't have the same, like, health concerns and things. So, like, I remember one mom who would always bring her kid, and she'd go, oh, yeah, he had 104 fever this morning, but he doesn't now. And we're like... <laughs> What? Or one time the kids had gotten messy doing like a craft project at my house. So we threw them in the tub and her kid had diary in the tub with my child. No. <laughs> and he had 104 or something fever again. You know, same mom, same kid. And I, I was appalled. Like I would never have taken my kid out. I would have kept him home. I wouldn't have exposed anybody else. So what do you do in a situation like that? That's what I love about mom dating. Not everyone is going to be your best friend, <laughs> you know? And, and we, we need to be kind to mm -hmm. one another. But we don't have to hang out with everybody all the time. And so as you go through this process, uh, you're going to find the people that are your people mm -hmm. who you can just be yourself and it's easy. And then you're going to find people who are like, you know what, this was a great time for a season, but <laughs> right. you're not going to be besties for right. your whole life. Right. And so some people probably, again, to use the same analogy, some people are good for a group date and maybe uh -huh. you don't want to have a, right. a one-nighter with them or a, 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 an afternoon play date at right. your house with and them. And I mean, I know I'm not everyone's cup of tea. Mm -hmm. Not everyone's mm -hmm. going to want to hang out with me all the time and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's good. All right, so we're at third base. Okay, so third base. If things are going well and you really do want to keep hanging out, mm -hmm. fourth base. And that's like the home run mm -hmm. where you like each other so much, you ditch mm -hmm. the kids <laughs> and you go out, just the two of you, for like mom's night out or to grab a cup of coffee. Uh, that's such a great time because we so rarely get time to ourselves right. that if you want to share it with another mom, right. you know you really like her. Yeah. She must yeah. be special. Yeah. And, and at that point, you're not just talking about your kids. You are talking 
talking about your kids, but you're also talking about you as women yeah. and, and what you're into and what you're learning. And I love that. A good a good mom's night out or one-on-one -on -one with another woman can last me for a while. Oh, that's, that's great. Mm -hmm. That's great. And that's the kind of thing you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And those, I'm assuming, are the friends that came when you were going through your difficult yes. things and sat by you. And, and what's so great about going ahead and doing the work to be intentional with other mm -hmm. women and find those few people. And it might be one or two. It might be six or seven. It just depends on how many friends you need and um, but when you have your your group of people then you, they're there for you when your world falls apart mm -hmm. um, and when things are hard you have them to lean mm -hmm. on and they have you to lean mm -hmm. on so that you can you can be them there for them as so, well. I think you just said something that I think is, is probably one of the keys it is hard work mm -hmm. like you have to be intentional yeah. and you and 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 so talk about that mm -hmm. it, like how much do you put in before you get out or you know you don't even know if you're gonna get anything out right. or yeah um, I think it depends on what stage of life you're in, too. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, when my children were little, um, and, and a lot of the stories and things from this book are from when I was a preschool mom, mm -hmm. um, that my mom dating looked differently because I had... Um, a different schedule and so a lot of it was I was with the kids and I was with the other moms now my kids are now all in elementary school mm -hmm. and so my schedules changed mm -hmm. um, I'm working a lot and so th the way that I try to be intentional with other moms and put the work in isn't so much thinking of extra things to put on my calendar mm -hmm. but I'm trying to just wrap moms into the schedule I already have like mm -hmm. hey I've got to go grocery shopping do mm -hmm. you want to hop in the car and let's mm -hmm. just go together and push mm -hmm. our carts around mm -hmm. and um, or, or even when my kids were little um, Hey, let's let's take them somewhere. We we both need to go get paper towels at Target anyway. Mm -hmm. So let's just go to Target together and have that mm -hmm. time, drink our coffee, hang out while our kids are, you know, trashing the aisles. <laughs> <laughs> so that's really creative. That's something I would never have thought to, yeah. to do, but it, you both accomplish what you mm -hmm. need to, and yet you get to have that connection and that sense right. of community that you wouldn't otherwise. Yeah, even um, if you don't have a lot of extra time, see if the mom can meet you 20 minutes early for a car pickup at, mm. in a preschool car mm. line and you 20 minutes grab coffee in the parking mm. lot just catch up and just go hey I love you I care about you fill me in really quick about what's going on and um and yeah it doesn't have to be this four hour on a Saturday night thing to, to, to make me, a relationship yeah work. yeah or I have to have a babysitter and we can you know it, right. it just yeah do it to accommodate your things mm. what about phone time like, you know, is that important part of this relationship? Do you spend time on the phone or not? Or? I do a lot of texting, a mm -hmm. lot of texting. Mm -hmm. And especially, the, like, the long-distance relationships mm -hmm. that I have where she's had to move or I've moved away. Um, I do a lot of texting. And um, some of my friends, even, we will text prayer requests and mm -hmm. verses throughout the week, just anything that we need to kind of, like, hey, this really huge thing is happening in my life. Mm -hmm. Can you pray about it? And um, that's a way that we support each other, even though we're all in our separate minivans <laughs> driving around town. And, and I guess what's good about texting is that then you can respond to it when you have time yes. or, as opposed to like where you're on the phone, like I got to go, the kids right. are, because we all know if you make a phone call, the kids are going to go crazy. Oh, They're going to. It's like they know, <laughs> they know. And I'll be in the bathroom with the door shut and mommy's talking. Yeah. So this whole mom dating thing, which is a really great way to sort of think about it. Um, you wrote a blog post about this mm -hmm. and what happened? I, I just wrote this, I wrote about the bases mm -hmm. and, and it was just kind of to be funny and, and kind of this is, this is what happens to me. I wonder if anybody else, this resonates and it, it went crazy on the internet. I mean, I had a very small blog and I was like hiding under my desk. <laughs> People on the internet are reading it and passing it around. Um, and so I realized with that, I've, I've hit upon something that is is a universal thing that moms are experiencing. What was the number? It was like 700,000 people read it or something? I, or it was, yeah, I mean, was, I think like, I don't know, like a quarter or a half a million people have read this yeah. thing. It's, it, it was... Huge. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, before that, like, my mom and my friends were reading my <laughs> blog. Like, And you've been blogging for years before I've that I've been blogging happened. since 2009, yeah. yeah. Um, and so it, it was a really big thing and it, it went crazy and then people wanted to know more and my my inbox got flooded with people asking me relationship advice. Oh wow. And I thought, okay, well, I've learned some stuff. Let me think about it. Um, and I, so I wrote another post about breaking up with a mom because if we're oh. dating, then eventually sometimes you have to have a breakup and what does that look like? And it, it, do you just phase her out? Do you have to have a confrontation? Oh. So I wrote a it's post. It's not you, it's me. Right, what does that look like? Um, and, and my comment section of that post filled up with just train wrecks. I mean, relationships. Oh. Women had been so cruel to one another. There was just so much damage and pain. And I just sat at my computer and cried and read through these. Oh. Um, and at that point, I started thinking, 
you know, there's so much material here and there's a need for it, clearly. Right. It would be amazing to put this all into a book to help mm -hmm. guide moms through this process. So mm -hmm. that's where Women Are Scary started. Which it, it is an amazing book. And like, I know at one point that I, I posted on my Facebook that I was reading it and I had people coming out of the woodwork going, where, where can I get that book? I need to, <laughs> I need to read that book. Because it is, it's, it's a felt need. Like, and it's something we don't talk about. We mm -hmm. don't, you know, because who do we talk to? We talk to other women. So the last thing we're gonna sort of do is deconstruct relationships right. with other I'm women. I'm having a problem with you. Can we talk about that? <laughs> Yeah, or, or I don't like you as much as I like this other person, but they don't seem to like me as much as I like them, so what would you advise me to, mm -hmm. to do with that? So tell me a, a funny or an interesting story about mom dating. Like, do you have any stories sure. about how that's worked? Sure. Well, um, I say in the book, don't bother putting on airs with other women because either your kids or your pets will out you as the faker you are. And that, I, I said that because I've learned the hard way that one time I had a group date, I had a group of women over and I was really again you know I'm messy um, but I cleaned my house from top to bottom I do not bake but I baked <laughs> I put the muffins out I did that thing where you put the 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 coffee pot with the little mug stacked next oh, to the yeah, coffee pot yeah. it was like I was working it <laughs> I am amazing everyone be my friend <laughs> and we had a wonderful time and everyone sat and made polite conversation I felt so good about it and as I let the last woman out the door bye thank you for coming to my lovely home <laughs> I walked back into the kitchen and looked down and my dog had left a turd on the oh, kitchen floor, no. like a big one, oh. a big one. And it was right by the coffee pot, like in a high <laughs> traffic area. So I'm pretty sure every mom had kicked it with her toe. Oh, no. And here's the worst part, no one said anything. No oh, one said anything. No. So there was just a big piece of poo in oh, my kitchen no. the whole time. And I thought I was doing such a great job. <laughs> That's sort of always the way it is. Like one of those moments we think we've got it, yeah. then we, you know, I look awkward. Yeah. Awkward, totally awkward yeah. adventure. Yeah, that's the, the <laughs> subtitle: a totally awkward adventure of finding mom <laughs> friends. Um, so, tell me, how do you find those kinds of fourth base friends? I mean, I know you sort of got a mom date, but mm -hmm. they seem really important, and it seems like those are the kind mm -hmm. we're really after. I mean, it's great to have people for play dates and mm -hmm. that kind of thing, but to have those fourth base friends, like, where do you even go, or how do you find them? Mm -hmm. um, as moms, I don't I don't know about you, but I just go where my kids go a lot because that's what where you that's have what to we go. do. Yeah. And so um, a lot of finding other friends was just encountering other women as I would be with my kids. And so it was that choice of am I gonna just read my book or be on my phone or am I going to look up and say something mm -hmm. and talk? And so um, I I kind of take the philosophy of um, if you don't know what to say, say something encouraging. Mm -hmm. And so if I see another mom, um, maybe our kids are in swim practice together, I um, lean over and say something encouraging that I that I might notice. And I ha kind of have a rule with myself. If I think something positive about another woman, I have to tell her. Mm -hmm. um, and so a lot of times I'll think something and then I'll, I'll make sure and share it with her. Because I think as moms, we don't get enough encouragement. Right, right. And, um, and so we need to encourage each other. And from that, um, I've just met some really neat people. Um, one of my closest friends I met because we ended up at a I think it was frisbee. I don't do sports. It was like frisbee or soccer. A lot of people were playing with some athletic equipment outside and I was swinging my son in the swing and um, and she is very sporty, but she was really pregnant. And so she kind of, it brought her down to my level temporarily. <laughs> and so we were at the park swinging our kids and, and got to talking. And, and she's one of my very best friends. And um, we, we see movies together and hang out a lot. And so uh, she's one of my go-to people. And it really just started with a conversation in a park. That's great. Yeah. Well, we are going to take another break. But when we come back, I think we need to talk about if you could do an app like Tinder for moms. I think that that would be like amazing. So we're going to come right back and talk more with Melanie Dale who is our mom-lationship expert. <laughs> this is great. Welcome back. We've been talking with Melanie Dale, who's the author of Women Are Scary, but the good news is that she's really sort of helped to actually said that the title's not true. Women don't have to be scary, that we can actually be friends and get along with them. But it seems like one of the biggest things, the biggest takeaway I would say from today is that a lot of it's in my head. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm the one that's way more worried about it mm -hmm. and the other mom's probably way more worried about her thing. And if mm -hmm. we both just sort of get past that, mm -hmm. we can make a connection much quicker and, and much more real. That's so true. So often I'm having whole conversations in my head that aren't even real. I just admitted I have voices in my head. 
<laughs> yes. So what would you say to somebody like me who's like, ah, oh, I probably should have some more women friends. Mm -hmm. um, what, what encouragement would you give her? Somebody who's sitting at home and is like, I'm a mom with kids and it sounds great, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. What would you say? I think, um, first of all, initiating is a superpower. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and we need people to initiate. So if you've been thinking about wanting to strike, strike up a conversation with another mom or ask another mom to do something, just do it mm -hmm. and keep your expectations low mm -hmm. because if she says no, it's not because she doesn't like your face. <laughs> it's, it's probably she's busy mm -hmm. or maybe she's intimidated and scared too. But So just don't be afraid mm -hmm. to ask. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you are someone who maybe hangs back and doesn't mm -hmm. say yes, maybe you need to say yes. Mm -hmm. Maybe you need to be brave and step into that relationship mm -hmm. and try it out. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so it's, it's sort of following that instinct that you may already have, but mm -hmm. you think of all the reasons why you shouldn't mm -hmm. uh, to, to do that. I think that's yeah. really great advice. So if people want to get your book, it's where fine books are sold everywhere, yes. right? And if they want to find out more about you, what's the best place for them to go? Unexpected.org is my blog, mm -hmm. and that's where I park all of mm -hmm. my thoughts on the internet. So, mm -hmm. And you blog regularly there so they can mm -hmm. read more about it mm -hmm. and, and find out what else you've got going on. Yes, I would well, love to connect. I have to say, Melanie, you were not scary at all. You were a wonderful guest. We, <laughs> we were so glad to have you. We'd love to have you come back next time. I know you've got another book coming up. We'd love to have you in, uh, talk about that as well. So if you're at home, you know, you need relationships. We all need community. That's one of the tenets of Christianity is that community is so important. We'd like you to be a part of our community. You can email us. Uh, you can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Twitter. We'd love to know what you're thinking and have you be a part of the show, future topics, what you thought about uh, today's topic. Thanks for being a part of the show today by being watching it. And, and we'd love to have you come back next time and join us again.